Hello everyone, this is Oregon Moto John. We're gonna do an oil change on a uh, 2021 Razor XP 1000 Rock and Trail Edition. Um, but this would be the same for pretty much any Razor XP. Um, it'll even be similar for the turbo models. Um, the main difference would be you'd have to check the oil capacity. For this particular model, it's 2.5 quarts. We're gonna use the Polaris PS4 um, Extreme Duty. I think that's a better oil than the, the non severe duty oil so I always use that I haven't had any engine problems or failures I've had probably six different razors since I think 2012 or so um, so I never had any you know burned any oil had any engine issues so um, I think it works however I am reasonably good about changing my oil roughly every 25 hours sometimes we'll stretch up a little more than that but I think Keeping clean oil in your motor is especially important. So changing oils on this machine couldn't be easier. Super easy. Here's what you need. Um, of course, you need a, cr uh, a crush washer. I replace these most of the time. Once in a while I won't, but they're copper, so they tend to deform. If you reuse them, you won't get a hideous leak, but it could seep a little bit on you. There's the part number there, 104865. Although there's other sources that you can get those from. Um, you need a six millimeter kind of Allen bit here. That's for draining your motor oil. Um, so yeah, that's six millimeter. You need an extension to get up past the skid plate. So I found this to be helpful. Of course, you'll need a ratchet. You need the appropriate end for the filter. You could use something to grab this filter from the side, but because there's limited space, just trust me, it's easier if you use the right, the right end cap for that. Um, Funnel of your choice, drain pan. I do like open drain pans because then when I drain the oil into a recycling container, I can look at um, and see what what particles are in the bottom of the motor or drained out of the motor. Um, you know, normal small particles wear and tear can be you know usual. However, um, I've spotted things happening. Like one time there was some silicone from you know when the motor was new that came out. And I thought, wow, that's crazy big hunks of silicone and things. The motor was fine, but Kind of interesting, and we'll need two and a half quarts of oil. So here we are. There, um, you can get a Polaris change kit. It gives you that little half um, quart here, or you could just measure it. Um, paper towels or, or shop towels are helpful, and that's really all you need. Um, headlamp. I use this Craftsman rechargeable one. Just recharges off a USB port. It, it works good enough. Because um, some places, and they're trying to see up where the skid plate is. Um, it's helpful to have a headlamp or to see what's going on with the filter. Okay, let's get started. First, let's uh, remove the um, drain engine drain plug and let's let that um, oil drain. So the engine drain plug is just in front of the rear wheel. So we're coming underneath here and I kind of found this ahead of time. You know, there's a bunch of different holes. You have your tranny drain plug back there We'll be doing that in a later video, but not this instant. So don't drain that one. Um, come forward in front of the rear wheel. And it's gonna be, um, on this model, there's a bunch of different holes. It's gonna be in this one right here. And you can put pit, pit your finger up in there and find the six millimeter um, Allen screw. I mean, it's, it's gonna be right up in that hole. be impossible for me to find so there it is right there that's what you're gonna remove thanks for your patience I'm finding that I go by feel more often on sight on most of this stuff I'll stick my finger up there find that have my drain plan pan ready to go have this ready to go put my ratchet up in there There it is, it's, I can tell I'm on it. I dropped into the hole, and now it's just a matter of um, breaking that loose. Okay, there it is, it broke loose. Once it's broke loose, I prefer to remove my ratchet and just put that in there, and then I can just remove that by hand, um, putting pressure up on that. 
until it's ready to come out and then it comes out. And two things to notice here, I noticed the crush washer did not come off, so we'll need to get that off before we put it back in. Uh, but let's let the oil um, just pour out for now. While that's draining, I went ahead and put my new crush washer on. Um, just a note too, I mean, you can um, warm up your engine before you change oil. That's probably recommended, I think, by most people. Um, so just, just a little point there, but realize once you start the motor and run it, it will be hot, could be warm, the oil could be warm. So wearing gloves or staying out of the way of the oil is not a bad idea. While the engine oil is draining, I'm gonna go ahead and put a bead of oil around this seal and remove the old filter and do that while the oil's draining. Put a bead of oil around um, the seal. It's very important, doesn't take a lot, but just put enough to where that's gonna spin on freely. There is an access door between the seats of the Razor um, to get it to oil filter. Um, I have to admit, I don't really ever use that. Um, I just access the oil filter, even when I had a turbo Razor, which they can be a little harder to get at. Um, I just access it from the driver's side. There it is. I mean, it's offset to the driver's side. I mean, I can easily get at that. So um, I'm just going to not worry about removing that door. But to get at it from the front wouldn't be wrong. I don't use an extension on this. I just put the oil filter in cap uh, removal tool just right on my ratchet. And I can easily just get in here, get on that, and... That's all it's going to take to loosen that up. It's, it's loose. Remove that. Um, I did put a rag under the filter because you can see the way that is. It's going to very likely spit some oil out um, when it comes off. So if you put a rag or shop towels under there, at least it'll catch most of it and just stop. Reduce some of the cleanup you have to do and, you know, won't make such a mess. So let's go ahead and spin that filter off. Of course, we'll keep it slanted with the hole you know in the filter up so we're not putting more oil on the engine in front of the motor than we have to so let's go ahead and spin that oil filter off just with our hand now and as you can see i'm glad i got my rag there because it is catching some of that oil and when i remove the filter i have it up hole up that is so we don't drain any more than we have to be sure to take a rag and wipe down the mating surface of where the oil filter is going to go on that um, oil filter base plate housing. Um, just take a clean rag, wipe it off. Um, also double check your old oil filter, make sure the gasket came off with it, don't want to double gasket. And we're just going to go ahead and clean that off and then put the new oil filter on. Hand tight. When the oil filter seats will go an extra three quarter turn, just like the instructions say. So I just Barely bottomed out that oil filter, and now I'm just gonna give it another three quarters turn, just hand tight. Not crazy tight here. My old oil filter was really nice to get off because I didn't over tighten it, so there it is. Bottomed it out to where it just started to touch on the housing, oil filter against the housing here, and then went another three quarters turn just with my hand, not with the wrench. Oh, last, one thing I forgot to mention before I start all this is, Clean your machine before you do this. It'll make it a lot more enjoyable. Um, yeah, I've gone in mechanical shops where people bring their machines to them dirty. You can have dirt fall into, you know, like a oil filter housing or places you don't want it. So just, you know, it takes a, an extra step, but I washed this machine last night before I worked on it because I don't like working on dirty machines. Plus, I don't think it's good, I don't know, just not good mechanical practice. Yeah, my oil's done draining, and I do need to still remove that uh, copper gasket that's stuck to my bottom of my engine. So let's go ahead and remove that now. I won't use a screwdriver. I'll actually use uh, my finger if possible, or I could always use something plastic, like a nylon trim piece screwdriver. I don't want to mar the mating surface against the motor because I can't replace the bottom of the oil pan very easily. Okay, so I always preload the... Um, got the washer off. It came off real easy just with my finger. I needed no force. So I have a new crush washer on here. Um, I have my six millimeter loaded with the with the drain plug on an extension. So now I can just put this in with my fingers. And I wiped off the mating surface after that washer came off just to make sure it was clean in there. 
And I just kind of go by feel. And I'm just going to turn that in there by hand, starting it by hand. Don't want to cross thread that, always by hand. And with the extension on there, I can take that right in, bottom it out. Now it's just a matter of putting my ratchet on there and snugging it up. Snug, not crazy tight. So now I have my ratchet on here. Um, I'm at the end midpoint of this, but I'm not going to use a lot of force. Just when it bottoms out, we're going to stop. It's aluminum. You don't want to strip that out. And there's where it kind of stops, and I am stopping. Don't reef on that. It's not a lug nut. You can always look up the torque spec, and that's never never a wrong thing. But I usually just go hand tight and snug, and I've never lost one yet. Be sure to remove your rags from under the oil filter. Um, because I had those rags under the oil filter, I didn't get a drop on, on the motor. So that was cool. I usually wear gloves. I didn't in this case, um, just because I needed the dexterity to film and I didn't want to fumble around in front of you guys. But usually I do wear gloves, but for the sake of dexterity and I'm doing this with a little less fumbling around, I, you know, didn't today. Now we just go topside and add two and a half quarts of oil and we're done. Um, here's a little old copper washer. I mean, you could reuse it. I've reused them before, but I found, see how they tend to groove a little bit where they made up to the motor. And I've had small seeping leaks from reusing copper washers. Nothing, never any terrible ones, but just, just a point. You may want to. Think about it's worth replacing it just so you don't get a seeping leak so this is the quart that i'm going to pour a half out of so it won't be fully used so sometimes i'll just put a little x on there that demarcates it so i know um next time i change oil that's not a full quart you'd figure it out anyway but so i'll be dumping two full quarts in and then then a half quart so of course we have to go to the rear access panel pull up on this tab this will pull up the front and then the back pulls out um, and there's the motor, and there's the oil um, fill, fill cap. You just remove that now, and we'll wipe around it, make sure it's clean. So remove your fill cap. See some dust down here from Moab. Good memories. So take your time, you know, wipe down thoroughly around this O-ring and your fill cap. I spent, you know, a couple minutes on that, making sure this was clean. And then, you know, take a moment, wipe around here, wipe the inside first, and then move to the outside, catch any debris. Once you wipe on the outside, don't go back to the inside. You know, this is your motor. This is why you're changing your oil. You don't want to get anything in here. Uh, I wiped down my funnel this morning, but I wiped it out again. It's clean on the inside and outside. You know, place it in there and let's uh, fill it with oil. Okay, so we're going to put the PS4 Extreme Duty um, oil in. This is a 1050 weight oil. And just go ahead and pour it in. Two and a half quarts. And of course, replace your oil cap. And then the access cover. To replace the access cover, you're going to drop these tabs into, obviously, these marks here. So we're just going to... Put the, kind of lift this up and then drop it down. I'm lifting up on this and it snaps down. Okay, it's back into place. Many times as I'm draining the engine oil, I'll look to see if there's any debris in the oil in the bottom of the pan. And I'm really not seeing anything unusual here. But you can look for metal shavings, particulates. So what drains to the bottom of the pan is revealed here. Really just uh, nothing much than usual small, small particles from engine wear. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. So I like using a pan for that reason. Kind of more of a footnote is when you're doing a break-in on a motor, man, I will, like, I'll do what oil change at 100 miles or so. On a new motor and you'll be amazed the stuff that comes out and i'll keep doing frequent oil changes till that slows down now this motor's you know broke in uh, really there's hardly anything coming out of it so just helps you keep track of things i guess what i'm saying is by seeing what's normal for your motor you get to understand if something abnormal happens you'd be aware of it and could go make sure you take the appropriate steps um, you know ultimately to really know what your oil's doing you need to send it off to like a oil analysis company like blackstone labs 
Um, but if you're doing frequent oil changes, most of the time that's not necessary. So we're gonna use our arrow up or down button above the mode button and until we see service. So I just kind of toggled through here until I get to service and then you're gonna push and hold that and then you're gonna go back to an arrow button and toggle through here until you get to this and then to reset that I'm just going to push and hold and then give it another press and there I've reset that to 25 hours you can set it to you know 25 to 50 hours but I just leave it at 25 and then um, use the arrow button to hit exit and then the mode button to push OK basically to exit out of that. And there you can see I've reset my service interval to 25 hours. Now it's just a matter of starting the razor, letting it run a couple minutes just to circulate the oil through the, um, through the motor and the oil filter, shut it off, wait a few minutes, check on the dipstick and it should be um, between the two hash marks, um, not over full and not um, below the lower circle where it's where it says add. So that's what we'll do next. I started the motor. I let it run basically 30 seconds to a minute. Um, you want to check the um, oil on the dipstick with it cold. You don't want to get this motor up to operating temperature. That's what Polaris recommends. So we're on the passenger side of the machine. We come in here and here's our um, dipstick here. We just flip this up and look, it even says there, check cold. Um, so yeah, you flip this up, pull it out. We'll wipe that off and then pull it back in and check the oil. You can, you can see on the dipstick, I've wiped it off and then you got these two dots. Um, you want to be between the two dots where it says safe. And if you're below the last dot, obviously it says add. So pretty self-explanatory, but worth noting. We've reinserted the dipstick, so let's go ahead and to where it's fully seated. Let's go ahead and pull it out and uh, see how it looks. Okay, there you can see we're um, kind of between, below the, the overfill hole. Look at the other side. So we're above the add, below the overfill, so we're at a good good spot. And the engine is cold as per um, Polaris direction, so we're going to go ahead and stop there. Look for leaks, check your um, underneath your machine, um, check the filter area, check for leaks, and you're good to go. Um, for what it's worth, I did need to use, add a little more oil to get this up to, um, to between those marks. I put in two and a half quarts, and it actually needed like... Um, just a, a fraction more, so just something to be aware of, I guess. Maybe yours is different, but uh, I put on just a, maybe another quarter of a quart beyond two and a half quarts to get it in the correct range. I hope that helps. Gives you some confidence to change your own razor oil. It's actually very easy to do. Um, like and subscribe. I'll be moving through this machine, cleaning the clutches, changing front and rear diff fluid so we'll just work our way through the machine in time and um, you'll learn how to do all those things it's easy these razors are super easy to work on it's just a matter of taking your time and taking it all in the right steps have a great day thanks for watching hello everyone this is oregon moto john we're going to do an oil change on a um, 2021 razor xp 1000 rock and trail edition um, but this would be the same for pretty much any Razor XP. Um, it'll even be similar for the turbo models. Um, the main difference would be you'd have to check the oil capacity. For this particular model, it's 2.5 quarts. We're going to use the Polaris PS4 um, Extreme Duty. I think that's a better oil than the, the non severe duty oil, so I always use that. I haven't had any engine problems or failures. I've had probably six different razors since I think 2012 or so. Um, so I never had any, you know, burned any oil, had any engine issues. So um, I think it works. However, I am reasonably good about changing my oil roughly every 25 hours. Sometimes I'll stretch up a little more than that, but I think 
keeping clean oil in your motor is especially important. So changing oils on this machine couldn't be easier. Super easy. Here's what you need. 